Hi everyone, it's Miss Adria and I'm here with Mr. Turkey and it's the month of November and we are having some lessons on giving thanks and soon it'll be Thanksgiving. That'll be wonderful. I want you to know that I love you and I miss you and I pray that you're doing well, doing well in school, healthy, strong and praying, reading your Bible and getting close to Jesus and I pray that this lesson will be a great blessing to you and it will be life-changing and you will never be the same because of this lesson. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of our wonderful blessings. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy. Thank you for sending Jesus. We are so grateful and thankful. Thank you so much and bless our time today together. Give us hearing ears and seeing eyes in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I love you. Have a good week. Don't be a turkey. Just say thanks. Don't be a turkey. Just say thanks. Don't be a turkey. Just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Don't be a turkey. Just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Ten men with diseases came one day to Jesus. He healed them and then told them, go to the priest and show them. All ten walked away, but only one came back to say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Many people still today don't remember what to say. When Jesus answers prayer and shows us how much He cares. So every single day, don't you forget to say, Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Don't be a turkey, just say thanks. Be thankful in your heart for everything. Be thankful in your heart for everything. 
Now, let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we just enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we just thank you. We thank you so much for all of your blessings. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our cars. Thank you for heat and air conditioning. And thank you for each one that's listening to this lesson. I pray great blessings upon their life, that you will touch them. They will not be anxious, but that they will have faith in you. And Father, that we'll all be more thankful. Thank you for everything, Father. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank you, Father. We give you thanks. We worship you. And Father, now we pray that you will bless this lesson to our hearts and help us to really learn from this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're getting close to Thanksgiving. And our lesson today is about giving thanks in all circumstances, in the good times, in the hard times, and in the bad times. We can give thanks in everything because of God's promises. Here's our verse for today, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's say it together. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Most of us understand that we should thank God for the blessings He gives us, and the scripture makes this clear. We can look at Psalm 7.17. It says, I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. And in Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. And then in Colossians 3, 15, it says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. So most of us understand that. We should thank God for the blessings that he gives us. And often at Thanksgiving, we take time to think about the blessings God's given us. Things like our family, good food, friends, our friends, and our church. And holidays are usually good times when it's easy to be grateful. And gratefulness is another word for being thankful. And it means to show appreciation for what you've been given. But have you ever heard someone say they're thankful for something we would consider a hard or a bad thing? Maybe something like not being able to go to school or having to move or your parents losing a job. What do you suppose God would want us to do during these times? Well, our memory verse today tells us what God says. Let's read it together. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 We're commanded in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 to give thanks in everything, in all circumstances. And this is a challenging command to obey. But God has equipped us to handle the good and the bad times that will come in this world and to give thanks for both. 
The Bible is full of examples of people who gave thanks to God in good times and bad. The first one in this lesson is an example of someone who gave thanks after a miracle, a good time, an obvious blessing. You remember this from last time? Luke 17 verses 11 through 19. Let's review it. And it came to pass as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed or healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Too often we may be like the nine lepers and forget to thank God for what he's done. Remember, the ten just went on to show themselves to the priest, but one who was a Samaritan turned back to give thanks to Jesus. And sometimes that's what we're like. We forget to thank God for what he's done. And here's a definition of gratefulness. Gratefulness is showing appreciation for what you have been given. Are you grateful for what you have and what you've been given, the talents you've been given, the blessings you've been given? And we can give thanks to God in good times. You can see here in the good times picture, that's the leper who came back that was cleansed. And you see in the background the nine. And then we can give thanks in bad times. Oh my, here's somebody floating in the water. Hmm. Let's say our verse again. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we know we should remember to show gratefulness to God for the good things he gives to us and does for us. But what about bad things that happen? Those are a lot harder to be thankful for, aren't they? So let's look at an example of a man who endured many terrible things as he served Jesus Christ and how he remained thankful through these trials. And his name is the Apostle Paul. He's also called Saul and he persecuted Christians by putting them in jail. But Jesus spoke to him and he became blind for three days, remember? And he repented of his sins and believed in Jesus. And Paul became one of the great preachers and teachers in the early church. Paul was an example of someone who thanked God during hard times of great suffering. Oh my goodness, let's learn about this. When Paul wrote to the Christians in Corinth, he shared some of the suffering he had endured to share the good news of Jesus. His work for Christ was costly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 27, he lists some of the hardships that he experienced. As a soldier of Jesus Christ, Paul traveled the world to fight for and share the truth of God's word. He endured much hardship to share the gospel with everyone he could, and Paul spent many long days sailing the seas. Three times he was shipwrecked and even spent a day and a night floating in the deep. We shipwrecked three times. That's a long time to be in the water waiting to be rescued. But God saved Paul after his ship sank and he was floating in the sea. Paul was also in danger from robbers because he traveled so much. Gentiles and Jews wanted to kill him for preaching about Jesus. He endured hunger 
thirst, cold, and sleeplessness. He was in watchings often at night, all for Christ and the church. He journeyed long, hard trails, enduring sleepless nights, hunger, thirst, cold, and exhaustion. He journeyed with a purpose to lead people to Jesus Christ. Those who were opposed to the gospel stoned Paul until they thought he was dead. You can read about that in Acts chapter 14. One time he got stoned and they left him for dead and he got up and the next day he traveled. It's only by God's grace that Paul was still alive after all these terrible things. Stoning was a punishment used to kill people by throwing rocks at them. And Paul was stoned and left for dead, but he got up and continued preaching. Three times Paul was beaten with rods, and five times he was whipped with 39 lashes. This is how he suffered for the sake of the gospel. 39 lashes was a public punishment where a person received a terrible whipping on the back, and each lash would tear open the skin. Imagine what 39 lashes would do to a person. Paul received this punishment five different times for preaching the gospel. And at the end of his life, Paul was chained to a Roman soldier and used this time to write letters of instruction and encouragement to the churches he loved. We have those letters written from prison in our Bibles today as the books of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. These books were all written while Paul was in prison. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. In 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 through 25, Paul wrote about his hardships. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. That was the thirty-nine lashes. Thrice I was beaten with rods. That means three times he was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice or three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, floating in the water. In journeyings often, like traveling often. In perils of water, like danger in the water. In perils of robbers, dangers of robbers. In perils by mine own countrymen in danger from the Jews, in perils by the heathen, dangers by the he- by the Gentiles, and in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. He was in a lot of danger. In weariness, he was tired. And painfulness, in watchings often, like not being able to sleep at night, up praying, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, like not eating, fasting, and in cold and nakedness. Wow. And then in Second Corinthians twelve ten he says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak then am I strong. Oh my goodness, he said, I take pleasure in infirmities, in being approached, in being in need, in being persecuted, in being distressed. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Isn't this amazing? God told Paul in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 12 that his grace is sufficient or enough for him because God's strength is made perfect in weakness. And God was telling Paul that when he was weak and suffering, God could show his power through him. And when we're strong and handling things on our own in the good times, we don't depend on God the way we do when we're going through hard times. And Paul understood that when he was weak and suffering, that God was his strength. God gave him the strength to endure all these things for Jesus. We all are blessed by the willingness of Paul to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If you were Paul, would you be thankful for all these things? Mm, That's a hard one, isn't it? As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, Paul dressed his soul in the armor of God every day. 
what amazing things God did through Paul. And like Paul, you and I can take up the armor of God to stand firm in all hardships of life. And we learn about the armor in Ephesians 6. So we can give thanks to God in good times and in the bad times. It's God's will for us to give thanks, so it's a command, not a suggestion to follow when we feel like it. We don't like to think about difficulties, but they happen to Christians as well as non-Christians because we live in a world corrupted by sin. So how can we obey this command to, in everything, give thanks? How can we be thankful at all times? Knowing that God is with us in the good and the bad times is important to remember. God has promised to never leave us or forsake us. But it's easy to forget God's promises when we're going through a hard time, isn't it? So how can we remember to be thankful even when we're hurting? What are the keys to being grateful at all times? Number one, let's remember 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven, And Paul wrote this to the Corinthians. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, those who put their trust in him don't have to fear suffering and death because they have the promise of eternal life. We have the promise of eternal life, so we don't have to be afraid of death or suffering. The hard times here on earth will pass away. They're going to pass, and we can be thankful because of the promise of eternity with God in heaven where there will be no more suffering, pain, or death. We have to look beyond, look beyond to heaven. This is only going to happen for a short time. How could Paul or we be content or thankful for these experiences? Well, first of all, he understood that earthly trials are temporary, and even the final blow of death is nothing to fear. For the believing Christian because Christ won the victory over sin and death at the cross. Second, number two, bad times help us develop character such as patience, faith, and hope. And Christians have hope because of God's love and his promise to be with us in every situation. Romans 5 verses 3 and 5 says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So what does verse 3 say to do in tribulation or suffering? Look at it. It says, we glory in tribulations. So we're supposed to glory in them. This is surprising. We're supposed to glory in or rejoice during bad times? When we're having a hard time, we're supposed to glory and rejoice? And what does tribulation or suffering produce? It produces in us patience. That's the way we get that wonderful character trait called patience. And what does patience produce? Look at our verse. And patience produces what? Experience. And here experience means character. What does character produce? What does experience produce? Look at the verse. Look at verse 4. And experience hope. These verses teach that suffering produces good qualities like patience and hope. And hope gives us confidence because of God's love for us. So nobody likes to suffer. Nobody likes to go through these things. But when we're weak, then we're strong. God will give us the strength to praise Him, to thank Him in everything. Give thanks. This is an important truth to remember during bad times. God's love never changes. And if we're children of God... 
we have his Holy Spirit with us always. No matter what we go through, the Holy Spirit is always with us. When people who don't know God experience hard times like sickness or death or financial money troubles, they may get angry, bitter, or feel hopeless and want to give up. God knows that it's hard for us to trust Him during bad times or hard times, and we tend to worry when things are out of our control, but God has given us advice on what to do when we feel overwhelmed by our circumstances. Let's see what that advice is. Number three, remember, Paul admonishes us to use prayer to give our worries and hardest situations to God. When we cast our cares on God with thanksgiving for what's happening in our lives, He promises to give us peace to replace our anxiety. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7. Remember, where did Paul write the book of Philippians? He wrote it from prison while he was chained to a Roman soldier. And he said that we should be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we should pray and ask and get make our requests made known unto God. And then, the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So verse 6 tells us, be careful for nothing. That means don't be anxious about anything. What should we do instead? Let our requests be made known unto God. That means to pray about it. Don't be anxious, but pray about it. Notice that verse 6 says that our prayers and supplications should be made in everything or in all circumstances. Look at verse 6. But in everything by prayer and supplication. What should our prayers be made with? Prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. In everything, good times and bad, God is in control. And that's why we can pray with thanksgiving as we give our request to God. And when we do this and trust God with our requests, what will he give us? The peace of God to keep or guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we give our worries to God and trust him, he gives us peace to replace our anxiety. We don't have to despair or worry when bad or hard things happen. We can even rejoice because we know God is sovereign and that means He's in control of everything. We don't have to know why things are happening. We just have to trust God. He's given us victory over sin and the promise of heaven. And because of these things, we can thank God for what's happening even when bad things happen or hard things happen. We're supposed to give thanks and everything give thanks. Well, it's definitely easier to thank God when everything's going well in our lives, right? But even with all of our blessings, we could be just like the nine lepers who didn't thank Jesus or give God the glory. And we also saw that the Apostle Paul went through some really bad, hard times, like being whipped, stoned, and shipwrecked. Well, we may not experience these trials, but we still have hard times. So how can we thank God for the bad times or hard times? What things do we need to remember to keep an attitude of gratefulness? We can remember God's promises of salvation, heaven. He's promised us heaven and his promise to always be with us. We don't know, but God may be working in our lives to show himself strong, to teach his character, or to accomplish a plan that we don't know and we don't understand. But we can trust in God's sovereignty and love. God is sovereign. God is in control. And he's always with us. 
knowing the character of God, His power, His sovereignty, and love can help us through hard times. Trusting God and His Word will give us hope, especially when we remember the promises of heaven and the Holy Spirit being with us. Finally, God never intended for us to handle the hard times alone. No, no, no. He wants us to depend on Him and give our hardest struggles to Him. And when we do, He promises to take those requests and give us peace and strength to get through our hard times. When we're weak, He is strong. So with complete faith in God's sovereignty and love, we can thank God for His blessings and even rejoice during times of suffering or hardship. Right? The Apostle Paul went through some very hard times, but he wrote to us and told us to, in everything to give thanks. And he told us to give our prayers with thanksgiving. Wow! How amazing the things he went through. And still, he had such a wonderful spirit leaning on the Lord. When did our memory verse say we should give thanks? In everything. And everything means in all circumstances. In all things that happen to us. In the good times and the bad. I know it's a really hard time. We can't go to school. Or it's a really hard time if we have to move. Or it's a really hard time if we're having trouble. our parents are having trouble with money. Or it's a really hard time if we can't see our friends. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we have to just keep thanking the Lord. Thank the Lord for our blessings. In everything give thanks. And here's another beautiful verse from Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into God's gates with thanksgiving, giving him thanks, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help us all. Help us to give thanks in everything. When we're going through good times, to be grateful, to be thankful. When we're going through hard times or bad times, Father, give us the grace to be thankful and to be thanking you and not to be complaining and murmuring. And to remember this verse, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank you so much for your help. Just like the Apostle Paul said, when I, we when I am weak, then am I strong. Lord, when we're weak, we know that you will strengthen us and we'll be leaning and depending on your strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. Thank you for your help. And thank you for all of our blessings. And we do thank you for the hard times because you always help us and you're always with us. In Jesus' name, amen.